beloved, welcome to Daily Charge with Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. On this day, 13th of November, 2024, shall we pray? Almighty God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for the beautiful day. Be exalted, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we are about to go into your word, O Lord, my Father, speak to us yourself. Let us see you minister to our soul. Let our spirit man be enlightened in the name of Jesus. At the end of the day, you will kill our ignorance and your name shall be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Today, 13th of November, 2024, we'll be talking on the topic, They Loved Not Their Lives Too. The second part of They Loved Not Their Lives. And our memory verse shall be taken from the book of John, chapter 16, verses 33. And I read, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good share, I have overcome the world. Meaning that it is only in Christ that we can have peace. Hallelujah. Motivational quote says, Dead men cannot feel. Those who are dead to self have conquered numerous temptation. A prophetic word for today, God will make you a general in his kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophetically speak to your life today that you will become a general in God's kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. And our fire scripture is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 24 to 27. You can read that on your own. Because of our time, we can proceed on the topic before me today. They loved not their lives too. As a Christian, what we must know is that we must carry our cross without minding the cost. As soon as we give our life to Christ, as soon as we want to work with God, we want Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. We want to be a child of God. Number one thing we must do is that there is a cross, or that we must know is that there is a cross to carry. We must carry that cross without minding the cost, the sacrifices we pay for carrying the cross. So as a believer, as a child of God, we must learn to carry our cross with Christ without any distraction, without minding what the people of the world we say or tag us to be. So we must understand that a Christian life is a life to death. That is, death to self. I'm not saying as soon as you give your life to Christ, you will die physically and be buried. No. You will die to self. You will die to sin. You will die to uh, error. You will die to self-pride. You will die to, oh, I can do it better. You will die to your own idea or your own personal self. And the life you live, you begin to live, will not be a life of your own. It will be a life of Christ. It is not you that is living again. It is Christ living inside of you. So all the traits, all the characteristics that you'll be bringing out will be the traits of Jesus, the characteristics of Jesus. And people will see you and say, truly, this is a child of God. You will live a life of brokenness. In short, in a, in, in a short word, as soon as you give your life to Christ, you live a life of brokenness, a life that is die, dead to self, dead to sin. Amen. Our self-life died together with Christ on the cross. Our self-life was also nailed to the cross. 
Meaning that when we are following Christ, our life that we have, I mean physical life, the life of all this tribulation, that is why uh, our memory verses in Christ we will see, we will find peace. But in the world, there is tribulation. So our life has been crucified on the cross with the Lord Jesus Christ and it, it has been nailed with him. And you see, a hand that has been crucified on the cross cannot slap someone. A mouth that has been crucified cannot cause or abuse. A leg that has been crucified with Christ cannot kick another person. A heart that is being crucified with Christ will not devise evil. A mouth that is being crucified will not tell lies. An ear that has been crucified with Christ will not listen to the things of the world. We not listen to gossip. So what that is what the Bible is telling us that we are died to self or we are dead to self, but we are living a life of Christ. Amen. This was what Apostle Paul was saying when he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth on, on the inside of me. For the life I now live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That is the testimony of Apostle Paul. That the life he have now is the life of Christ. Because Christ has given himself for him, for me, and for you and for all of us. So the life we have now is not our own life. It is the life of Christ. Christ being glorified through our lives, through our existence. Hallelujah. And we can see that in our fire scripture, there is a call to love God and not self. We see some people, they prefer to love themselves and paint the love for Christ because they want to satisfy selfish interest. They want to satisfy self. No. In our fire scripture, we see that there is a call not to love self, but to love God. When our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, told his disciples how the world will reject them or reject him for God's will, and purpose to be fulfilled. There was a time when Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was teaching and talking to his disciples. You know, in different occasion in the Bible, we have seen where Jesus will be teaching his disciples, telling them things, you know, trying to open their ear and heart of understanding to understand the things of the Spirit. So in this kind of occasion, he gathered them together and he was telling them of what will happen. How the world, uh, after all the miracles, all the signs and wonders Christ have done for the people, after all the benefit that people have benefited from him through the power of God in his life. He said, after all this, people will see no appreciate him. People will what? reject him and want to take his life. But this is not people. It is for the will of God to be fulfilled. When our Lord and Savior was telling Peter, I mean the disciples, including Peter and all of them, about this, Peter was not, you know, was not pleased with that statement. So Peter quickly stood up to rebuke Jesus, to negate what Jesus was saying. And when Peter said that, Jesus quite reprimanded him and said, Get away behind me, Satan. It was Peter that was talking, but Jesus was rebuking the devil. Because Jesus had understanding of spiritual warfare or spiritual word. He knew that that has been written concerning him. And that is the only way he can fulfill purpose and destiny. But someone like Peter was rejecting it. But not Peter himself, but devil speaking through Peter. We will take a short break now. We will be right back. 
Stay tuned. God bless you. Through your handheld gadgets, you can now have access to your daily devotional. The Mountain Top Live for the year 2024, Volume 9. Available through download on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Download yours today. Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. A life changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional for 2024 is now available. Volume 9. Get a copy today and some for those you care about and leave your days filled with the presence of the Lord. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. Life changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Get a copy, visit www.mfmebooks.com or any MFM bookshop near you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. Welcome back to Daily Charge with Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. And we are talking on the topic, they loved not their lives. And we are talking about the life they don't love. It's the life of the flesh, the life of the world. You don't want to be like, um, as a child of God, you must not be like the people of the world. Your worldly life must be crucified with Christ on the cross. That the life you, we have as Christians now is not our life, but the life of Christ living through us. And we are talking about when Jesus was telling his disciples about how his journey of, onto destiny fulfillment will go. That after all he has done to, for people, after all the good work he has done, how people will reject him, how people will do everything to him. And Peter, being passionate, but, but could not understand the thing of the Spirit, quickly, you know, rejected it. And Jesus Christ reprimanded him and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus, it was Peter that was talking, but Jesus was rebuking the Satan. I mean, the devil, Jesus was rebuking Satan because Jesus understood that it was Satan speaking through Peter because Peter was a man of fear. So he knew that this statement is from the devil and not from Peter. And he told Peter, all this could happen. Satan could speak through you because you are not dead to self. When we are dead to self, there is no loophole in our lives for Satan to hide or to operate praise the lord hallelujah and i pray for us in the name of jesus anywhere the devil is speaking to us any channel blood of jesus seal it up today in the name of jesus amen the message that our lord and savior jesus christ was passing to peter was that peter has not been dead to serve in order to fulfill, to fulfill divine purpose, Peter, as at that time, was not dead to self. And anyone that is not dead to self will be difficult for such an individual. It will be difficult for such an individual to fulfill divine purpose. So our Lord and, Jesus, and, and Savior, Jesus Christ, told Peter that you are not dead to self. So it will be difficult to fulfill divine purpose. But Peter delight or delighted in the things of the heads to fulfill the will of man instead of the will of God. I pray that today the Almighty God will open our ear and heart of understanding in the name of Jesus and He will give us the spirit of discernment to know who is speaking and what is speaking through us or through anyone that is close to us or counseling us or advising us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, has commanded us that whosoever that will follow him 
and become a general in his kingdom, must fall die to self, then take up his cross and follow him. If you want to follow Jesus, you don't look back. You must be focused. You must carry your cross. Carry your cross means obeying all the rules and regulations of the kingdom. Saying yes to the commandment of Jesus and saying no to what flesh, the world, or Satan is saying to us. Or if it is the will of God, that is what I will do. The will of man, I will not do. So what the Bible is trying to tell us, or our Lord has commanded us, is that whatever that he has not instructed us to do, we should not do it. That is not from him, it's from the world. So anyone that wants to follow Christ must follow him wholeheartedly, must be a good disciple, must be a good follower, must emulate Jesus in everything at every given time. We must carry your cross, not minding what the world will say. They will call you all sorts of names. They will call you, they will tag you all sorts of things. You don't mind. You continue to be yourself and follow the master. Hallelujah. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, also instructed us that whosoever will save his life, we lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for the sake of the gospel, will save it. So if you are afraid, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, and you deny Christ, you will not have eternal life. But if you don't mind what will happen, and you see this word as, oh, we are just passing by, I will not deny Christ. If you lose your life because of Christ, the reward of eternity is waiting for you. Apostle Paul saw this as a call to love God and not serve. What we are saying today is that when you love God more than how you love yourself, you deny yourself so many things for the will of God to be done. You are truly a child of God. But when you allow the will of God to be on hold and your own self-will to be fulfilled, it means that you are not ready to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. For example, Abraham. Abraham could not have a child. Until his old age, God gave him Isaac, a promised child. A child that he has been waiting, waiting for for a long time and at a point in time God told Abraham the same child that you love so much the same child that I have given to you in your old age I want you to sacrifice that child for me Abraham did not hold back Abraham did not have any doubt or any fear of ah if I sacrifice this child to God which child will bury me or what will happen to me Abraham gladly accepted the commandment of God and he was willing or he willingly executed the commandment of God. So he took Isaac, his son, to be sacrificed to God. When God saw the readiness of his heart, that is what we call deep commitment to God. That is what we call carrying your cross, not minding the cost. Many people will have denied God that, ah, uh -uh, God, you are wicked. How can you do this to me? How can you say I should sacrifice the only child I have in my old age? But no, Adam did exactly how God instructed. And when he was about to sacrifice Isaac, the Lord sent a substitution in form of what? A lamb. And he spared the life of Isaac. And rather, an animal was being sacrificed. That is the example of when you save your life, you will lose it. But when you are ready to lose your life for the sake of Christ, for the sake of God, you will gain it back. If Abraham has held back to sacrifice Isaac, God himself can still kill Isaac. Whether Abraham kill him or he doesn't kill him, God himself 
might send the spirit of death to kill Isaac. And there is nothing Abraham can do about it. But Abraham was a lawyer child of God who will not mind whatever that will cost him to carry his own cross. He does not mind his own life. He does not love his own life. He loves God. And he believed that God over everything. And he received his own profit, his own reward. If not, he will have spared the life of Isaac and say, God, please uh, spare my child. And God will have still killed the child. But he decided to obey God. And God gave him the reward of obedience. You must not love your life more than God. No. That is not the life of a Christian. Whenever you give all to God, God in turn gives you everything that you need or you ask for, ask for. When you give everything to God, I surrender all, I give all. God gives you back everything in return. When you don't hold back from God, God will never hold back from you. That is the promise and that is the commandment and that is the mandate of Christ to all the believers. We will take a short break now. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. God bless you. Through your handheld gadgets, you can now have access to your daily devotional. The Mountain Top Live for the year 2024, Volume 9. Available through download on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Download yours today. Mountain Top Live Daily Devotional, Volume 9. A life changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional for 2024 is now available. Volume 9. Get a copy today and some for those you care about and leave your days filled with the presence of the Lord. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. Life changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Get a copy, visit www.mfmebooks.com or any MFM bookshop near you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. Welcome back to Daily Charge with Mountain Top Life daily devotional and we are still talking on the topic they loved not their lives too the second part and we're talking about uh, the love of christ the love of god the love of the world and we are talking about dying to self amen so i uh, abraham accepted to sacrifice isaac and god in turn gave him back Isaac and through Isaac you can see what happened many generations came forth God saw a true general in Abraham in whom he can build his future church he sees that I can confide in this I can invest in this person because he's trustworthy can God invest in you can God trust you to that extent? Can God build his future or the future of the church in you? Will you deny him or you will follow him? <laughs> it is well. Brethren, are you a true general of God's kingdom? Can God call you his general or you are the one that's saying, I am God's general? I am God's general. That is self acclaim. Uh, status it is not what God called you can God call you his general the way he called Abraham his own you must live your life to fulfill the mandate given to all the believers in Revelation chapter 12 verses, verse 11 you must live your life to fulfill that mandate 
you must not live to love yourself. This is what I want to do. This I want to do it. Not minding what God wants you to do at that time. Your life is not to satisfy you, but to satisfy God. That is why the Bible says, I have created you so that you will give me what? Glory. Your life must give glory back to God. That is the reason why you are being created. You must love God and not self. Loving God is the qualification for the kingdom of heaven. So, do you have that qualification? Do you love God? If you love God, are you willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of God? Are you willing to sacrifice your pride, your ego, your sinful desire for the sake of the kingdom of God? Are you ready? If you are ready, congratulations to you and you change your way. God bless you in Jesus' name. Say this. Say, O oh Lord, my Father, destroy any idol that has replaced you in my heart. You can put your hand on your chest and pray. Say, O oh Lord, my Father, destroy any idol that has replaced you in my heart. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, my Father, destroy any idol that has replaced you in my heart. In the name of Jesus, any idol that has replaced God in my heart be replaced by the fire of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, my Father, I receive grace to do your will at all costs. In the name of Jesus, my Father, I receive grace to do your will at all costs. In the name of Jesus, my Father, I receive grace to do your will at all costs. In the name of Jesus, my Father, I receive grace to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, Holy Spirit, my helper, strengthen me to walk in love from my inner man. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, my helper, strengthen me to walk with love from my inner man. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Also quickly say this. Say, I surrender to God's plan for my life by fire. In the name of Jesus, I surrender to God's plan for my life by fire. In the name of Jesus, not my will again, but the will of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that henceforth the will of God alone shall be fulfilled, shall come to manifestation in your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Stay tuned. See you again.